Hey YouTube, I thought I'd give an overview of my Zenbot CNC. This is the 4x8 uh, router table version that they have. They also have a 4x4. Um, I primarily want to do this video because I don't really see a lot of videos out there on this machine. I'm not really sure why. I don't know if it's just not as well known. When I was in the market for a 4x8 machine, I did a decent amount of Googling and I didn't come across it. I actually had a friend of mine uh, reach out to me and said, uh, hey, have you seen this one? I'm like, no, I haven't. So maybe it just doesn't pop up high enough on a search engine. I don't know, but it's a really great machine that I've really enjoyed um, and it's under 10K. This is used for my business. It's not for a hobby, playing around. I have a business, Martinson Manufacturing, and we make custom plexiglass window inserts. Um, we make thousands of them and ship them all over the US. So my business depends on this. My financial well-being depends on this machine. Um, I don't want, I didn't want to be dependent on some cheap kit where everything's made out of wood and whatnot, but I feel like this one is a really robust, strong, rigid design um, that's got a lot of great features that I can actually run a business with. Um, <clears throat> so this one, so I've actually had three of these machines. Um, I've only had this one for about three months. Uh, I first bought one back in uh, 2022, September. That one was an older version. Maybe I'll pop up a picture of it. That one had a lot of plastic components, extremely rigid design. That one had uh, kind of like skateboard bearings that rolled across a three by three inch steel tube. It was insanely rigid, very heavy, but insanely rigid. Uh, that one got me through my summer business, uh, worked really well. I had some issues, but uh, worked pretty well. Um, and then I bought another one because I wanted to have another secondary backup machine. So I bought this one, uh, let's say summer 2023, and this one arrived. This one, he redesigned it. It's an all aluminum design that just came out, I think, summer 2023. And I've loved this so much that I actually sold my plastic one and bought another one just like this. And that one's not even assembled yet. So uh, I'll just kind of go over a little bit of the features. I'm not a super technical guy, um, but I'll just kind of go over my personal use, kind of what I think of it. Um, it's kind of hard not to compare it with the other one. Even though I've only used this for a few, uh, about three months, I feel like I can speak to it well because I've used the other one for uh, probably almost a couple years now. And that one worked really well. And this one is kind of the version two that's supposed to be twice as better. It's twice as fast, supposed to be more rigid, a much better design. So I think this is gonna work out uh, really well. <clears throat> so kind of walk through um, some of the features. Um, so this one, um, if you wanna know, this one's 65 hundred bucks. Uh, that's with the uh, the stand, I guess, if you want to call it the all aluminum stand. That one is 1100 bucks. If you don't want to buy it, you could save yourself a little bit of money. But if you're already there, might as well buy it. It's, um, it's really nice to have. My old one sat on a two by frame, two by four framed cart. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so this one was 6,500 bucks. I think that was out the door shipped to my house. Uh, the assembly, I hate assembling just in general um, and it took I think it took two full days you know there's like 200 different fasteners and t-nuts and whatnot but it's fine there's nothing crazy about it um, he has pretty good instructions that show you how to put everything together uh, some stuff you might kind of got to figure out yourself a little bit but that's kind of what you get with the kit um, I am very impressed with the quality for being under 10 grand uh, so <clears throat> this one so this one actually has uh, nice linear rails to it we could actually take a peek at these. I guess he said these were out of a Haas machine, the Haas CNC machine. Basically uses the same ones. Uh, so we got these <coughs> bearings here that run, run across this linear rail. It's really durable. So we got two sets here um, for the X. Um, also got the same construction here for the Y. I think this one, yeah, this one actually has four. We got two bearings on this side, two on the back. That's nice and rigid. And then for our Z, same thing, linear rails, two sets of bearings here, two sets here, and here we actually have the lead screw, whereas everything else we have belt driven. <coughs> By the way, I would highly recommend getting a, a nice spindle. I think this one only was, maybe it was like, maybe it was like 300 bucks off Amazon. I was using a DeWalt trim router. I went through three of them. Maybe I was just pushing the machine too hard. I don't really think I was, um, 
but even just out of the gate, I felt like it vibrated. It wasn't very strong and, and durable and really had enough kind of torque uh, to do what I needed it to do. This one is insane. You can crank this up to over 30,000 RPMs. You can't feel a single vibration on it. It's, it's pretty incredible. So if, you're, if you have a hobby machine, trim router, that's fine. But if you're getting a little bit more serious, you need tighter tolerances. This I can hold a 30 second tolerance all day long, which I feel like is pretty impressive for under 10 grand. Uh, but yeah, I'd highly recommend getting a nice, a nice spindle. This one had a, sec a separate controller, whatever they call it, VFD controller or something like that. But I, could, I just preset it um, here and then each day. It's turned off right now, I'll just hit run, but you can control the speed here. Um, there's a little extra wiring you have to do, but <clears throat> not that big of a deal. It adds a, a ton of value. So, oh, by the way, of what I, what I cut, unless you're curious, um, I cut quarter inch acrylic. That's all I cut uh, all day, every day. We can look at this pile <laughs> real quick, but this is basically what I'm cutting. I got, I don't know, probably about 10 sheets there. Um, I go through quite a bit, quite a bit of material, especially in the summertime. So if it's able to cut through quarter inch acrylic, which is pretty hard, if you're wanting to use this for wood, that's gonna chew through wood, no problem. Does it do aluminum? I think everything probably does aluminum if you only take off a thousandth of an inch at a time. Um, but I can't speak to that because I, uh, I haven't tried it. I just cut um, acrylic here. Um, these are my own kind of hold downs that I made in case you're wondering, they don't come with the machine. These are just 3D printed uh, just to hold it down. I have the same sheet size every time. This is really nice too. Um, if I need to change out the sheet, I just loosen it up, push it back, take off the machine take off the sheet, put a new sheet on, push it down, tighten it down. And it's, it's really, it works really well. These are just kind of a press fit. The, the sheet just kind of slides in, kind of a press fit, and then the other ones clamp down. Um, <clears throat> I don't need to drill any hole downs in the middle. I don't really get any, any lifting uh, when I'm cutting. Um, <clears throat> let's see, support. Uh, support is really good. Um, the guy, Sean, he is uh, the owner. I think, I think out in California, I've had a few issues uh, setting it up and along the way that I've had questions about. Um, he's really responsive. Uh, phone call seems to be the best way to get a hold of him. Email's a little slower, but if you call him, he'll pick up right away. Um, I had a few issues, so a little bit moving into some of the cons. So overall, uh, this thing performs really well. It's very rigid, cuts very fast, it moves fast, it's very lightweight. Um, if you want to know all the travel specs, just check it out on the website. I can't tell you what that is offhand. Um, <clears throat> some of my cons are more uh, computer stuff. I will say I'm not a computer guy at all. Um, even though I do 3D modeling and produce G-code and use a CNC, I'm kind of allergic to technology at the same time, if that makes any sense. Um, so installing, there's a little driver. So this probably my biggest complaint about this machine is uh, the control box. It has this really old parallel port, which I think was for printers back in like the 80s. And that obviously doesn't pr plug into a modern day uh, computer. So you have this little adapter called the UC100 and that converts it into a, a USB. Um, and that little adapter requires to install a driver but on Windows 11, it wants to flag that driver. It thinks it's, there's all these firewalls trying to block it. It was just a pain in the butt for me to try and install it. If you're more computer savvy, maybe you don't have an issue, but I had an issue getting that to install on my machine. That's obviously not really a CNC issue. It's more of a, more of a computer driver installation issue. Um, I will say my learning curve, this, I'm pretty new to CNC. Um, I've been using it full, full time for probably about a year and a half but this is really kind of my first step into it. I don't have a vast amount of knowledge or experience or history with other kinds of machines. I did buy a Onefinity CNC. That was my first machine. It was like a three foot by three foot, uh, probably two, almost three years ago. I played around a little bit and then I kind of moved into this business needed four by eight capabilities. Um, the Onefinity CNC, I will say was more, a lot more plug and play, probably a shape oak or something's gonna be a lot more plug and play. This one's more of a, more of a kit um, and um, it was just a little bit more tricky for me for a, kind of the learning curve. I will say I am using Mach 3 as the uh, control software. I could show you that real quick. 
just to show you kind of the interface of what that looks like. Mach 3 is super old. I don't know how old it is, but it's, it's kind of old and antiquated, but it works. The reason why I'm using Mach 3 is because that's what he recommended to use. I guess it works well with some, a lot of these kind of kits that exist out there. Um, I would like to upgrade uh, from this just because I feel like it's a little old and outdated, but it's the only one I, the only one I know right now, and uh, it works fine just because I'm, I'm used to it at this point. So <clears throat> that's kind of the interface of that. You can use whatever control software uh, you want. I think you can even get a different control box for this if you wanted to kind of bypass that UC100 adapter. Um, but that's about it. I'm not much of a kit guy or techie guy, so I'm just kind of leaving everything right as it is. I'm not gonna mess with anything else. So I'll say my, <clears throat> my next machine I'll probably get uh, is probably maybe that Tools Today one, but that's gonna be about 30 grand. That one has lead screws all the way around. Um, this business is just kind of starting out. It's still a small business. I don't have a ton of capital <clears throat> to be thrown around on equipment. Uh, so I really was looking for something under 10 grand and this fits the bill. So. Uh, like I said, um, this is my, my third one. I've been very happy with how uh, these machines have been performing. Uh, again, not really sure why I'm not seeing a lot of these on YouTube. So hopefully this can kind of introduce you to maybe another machine that you haven't heard of before um, that is out there. Um, I'm not a techie guy by any means, but if you have questions about this machine, shoot me a comment. I'll try to help you out the best I can. Um, this is just kind of a quick overview, my kind of initial uh, thoughts on, on the machine. In conclusion, I, I would totally recommend this. I'm trying to get a buddy of mine <laughs> to buy this. His name is Anthony. You know who you are. Um, yeah, I think it's a great kit for, for the price. Um, I think it competes really well with some of those other um, all aluminum designs that are a little up there in the higher price range. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on the machine. Overall, great machine. Again, I bought another one. I'll probably maybe even buy a, a third or fourth one at this point if I need to, if, if I continue to grow and need bigger capacity. So that's kind of it. If you have any questions, shoot them in the comments and I'll try to uh, answer them best I can. But, or you can just check out their website, ZenBot uh, CNC.